Welcome everyone to this webinar on Improve Salesforce Application Performance by Leveraging Platform Cache Using Lightning Web Components. Thank you for joining us. I am Kunal Chauhan, CTO QA Infotech. I'm joined here by my colleague and lead Salesforce developer, Vineet Goyal, who will walk us through the concepts and implementation of Salesforce Platform Cache. Today's webinar is focused on Salesforce, which is a part of our software development services. We have been working with our clients in this technology area since 2017. During this time, we have worked with Salesforce Classic, where we have Visual Force page for front end. It is similar to HTML and Apex class for business logic, which is similar to Java and also on Salesforce Lightning, which comprises of Aura components and Lightning Web components. These leverage the use of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Salesforce has a multi-tenant architecture, so it gets more important to build an optimized and efficient application for quick output and excellent end user experience. Our development experts also help our client partners in quick migration of their environment from classic to lightning with an optimal approach. And while delivering product functionalities, we in parallel continue to implement the latest features introduced by Salesforce periodically, like platform events, report builder for lightning communities, and many such. In this regard, Today, we are going to present a similar feature called Platform Cache, and we'll see how the performance of your Salesforce application can be improved for both classic as well as lightning experience. All attendees at this time are on mute. Please feel free to post your questions in chat window. We will discuss them at end of the session. Over to you, Vineet. Thanks, Kunal. Hello, everyone. Good morning and good evening. I'm Vineet Goyal, Lead Salesforce Developer at QA Infotech Software Services. In this session, today I'm going to talk about CAFE and their options in Salesforce. After that, I'll talk about what is Platform Cache and their types. Before going to the demo, I'll showcase how we as QA Infotech has evolved from Visual Force to Orion Web Components. Thereafter, I'll go with a small demo to showcase how we can increase Salesforce application performance using Platform Cache. Then I'll talk about Cache Builder. Then I'll show you some key points and references. And thereafter, I'll showcase what are the highlights of Salesforce products. So let's move on to the first talk. Cache and their options in Salesforce. Cache. We know that in browser, we have caching options to enhance end user experience and enables processes execute faster. We talk about browser caching. We can see that IndexedDB is a simple form of cache which stores the data on a browser and showcase that whenever user wants it. We do have metadata cache as well as database cache. Now Salesforce has introduced platform cache in which we are going to perform how we can increase the performance. Caching options in Salesforce. Earlier we have custom setting and metadata through which we can cache the data, but they are inflexible. The data which is stored in custom setting and metadata are hard coded through which we can get the data through Apex and use it. But we cannot modify the data stored in custom setting in metadata. Hence, we are going to use platform cache to manipulate the data, save that in cache and use it further to enhance user experience. Salesforce platform caching. I'll explain what 
is platform cash in Salesforce with an example. If you see here, the in database, we have new leads come in and we have the UI experience wherein we see the lead list there. Once we have an application layer where we can store the data in platform cache, in one login, once we get the data from database and store it platform cache, and every time after that, uh, subsequent logins, we can get the data through platform cache and showcase onto the UI. We need not to go back to database and get the data. Hence, the UI experience increases and response time decreases. Benefits. Why exactly we need to use platform cache? These information which has been showcased here has been calculated by Salesforce. Let's say, for example, if we are making a total request of 12 million per day, we are using the database usage as 83 hours and the DBU, DB CPU percentage usage as 7 to 8% and average response time for that is 30 milliseconds. After using platform cache, we have a drastic good reduction in DB usage as well as heap size. Improvement in DB usage is 7 to 10% and the improvement in response time will be up to 60%. Now I'll talk about what are types of lightning platform cache. We have two types of cache. One is off cache, other one is session cache. Both has two classes named as cache.org partition and cache.org. Same with the session cache, cache.session partition and cache.session. Org cache is used by common user. Com it's a common cache in an org which can be accessed by all the users in that org. While session cache will be privately used by each login user. The total roundabout time to expire the cache data in org cache is 48 hours, while in session cache, it's up to eight hours. However, we can define the time to live time for that cache through Apex as well. In order to use Lightning Platform cache, we have to maintain the cache misses as well. We have to take care of cache misses into the code. We have to follow the best practices through which will not be going through race conditions and we are not missing the data through cache misses. Before going to the demo, I'll showcase how Salesforce evolved from Visual Force to Aura and Web Components. And we as Q and QIT, we have worked on Visual Force and moved to Aura and Web Components. So we had Visual Force pages through which we can showcase the UI and the Apex controller through which we get the data through database. In Aura and Web Components, we used to have custom component models, templates, modules and event in Aura components. However, these particular Aura components are slower than web components because Aura component use ES script as five. In Lightning web component, we use ECMS script seven. In web components, we use shadow DOM modules and standard, standard events to get the data from Apex. Now we'll go to the demo and sh I'll showcase how we can leverage platform cache using Lightning Web Component to fetch object names. Let's go to the Salesforce org. I'll showcase how platform cache can be used and we can create the partition as well. So I have created one partition named as object data and it has no data stored as of now. And if I go to my VS code, I have created a web component wherein I'm using a lightning card as of now to show the object picklets. 
you can use lightning combo box or lightning data table as well i have in js i have used a method as get object named by circle in which i'm querying the data directly from database so i'll go into my org and i'll reload it and in this object list we get the objects here when i go to the dev console i get the logs here and if i see the performance i can check how many millisecond and what is the heap size have been taken by this by loading this particular page so the heap size is 6371 and the duration of loading this page took around 128 milliseconds now i'll change the method name from circle to caching and i'll save it after saving it i'll reload this particular page on salesforce to see how much performance reduction is there now i'll reload this page and see again i got the object list here i go to dev console i check this particular logs and in the first load the data has been stored into the platform cache if you if i recalculate the platform cache let me reload it once again and see the data has been stored in platform cache yeah so the platform cache partition has been used to 100% wherein the data has been stored so in first load if you see it will it will take time and the performance will not be reduced because we will be storing the data in platform cache and the heap if you see the duration is 193 millisecond and the heap size is 6491 when i reload this particular page again it will not go back to the database to get the object list it will directly get fetch the data from platform cache again i'll go this particular log and see the duration it took around 16 millisecond and the heap has been reduced to 1330 earlier while doing while querying the data directly from database it was 6371 the heap is the db size which has been used by salesforce in order to showcase the data onto the ui so it has also been reduced while querying the data from platform cache so in this case the platform cache has been used and in order to store the object names and in order to increase the salesforce application performance cache builder earlier i have talked about cache misses as well in order to follow the best practices we have to contain cache misses in our apex code as well we have to check every time what exactly and in what time cache misses happens salesforce has provide cache builder which will handle the cache misses automatically we need not to define anything into our code we just have to implement this interface in order to handle the cache misses see so we need not to worry the cache misses and it will handle automatically the limitation for cache builder is that we cannot specify the time to live time for cache if we are using or cache the default time for cache storage is 24 hours and for session cache it will be up to 8 hours what are the use cases for or cache so in use or cache use cases we can store the cache list case list for service agents we can store lead list for sales agent in order to show the reports weekly we can store the data in platform or cache and we, at the end of the business week 
we can showcase that, that particular report. And in these reports, the data will be showcased or come onto the UI very quickly. In order to fetch the user profiles or metadata or org info from Apex, we can store the data in org cache so that we need not to go back to the database every time and get the user profile data, metadata, or org info. Use cases for session cache. In session cache, we the session cache will be allocated for one login user, right? So org order history, order items, and the discount information for that particular user, we can store the, those data in session cache. We, in order to make an API call to a third party application, we have to make a call out every time to get the real time data. Let's say we have to update those particular data on third party application every day. So we can store their data for one day and fetch the data from session cache. Instead of making an API call out, will get the data from session cache. In this way, we are going to reduce the API call, which, I'm, which we are making to third party application, and we can increase the performance by getting the data from session cache. Also, we have various financial data for that user as well. In order to save those financial data and in order to fetch those data for that particular user, we can store those financial data in session cache so that whenever a particular user try to fetch those data, they can get very quickly and real time as well. So here are the few here are few key points to consider. We need to know the limits of platform cache. We need to take care of those particular limits. We have to understand what exactly the limit for that particular platform cache it is, and we have to follow the best practices as well. There are various use cases, but not all data we can cache. We can only cache in few use cases so that those data can, those data cannot be lost and no cache misses happens. There are a few references. You can go to Trailhead or the developer guide to understand what platform cache is and what, where exactly and how exactly you can build it. There is one trail mix as well in order to understand which talks about the ISP product team members as well and how those particular ISPs can fetch and store the data into the platform cache and make those cache partitions as part of their component and install it into the subscriber rocks. We have talked about one particular feature as platform cache. And likewise, there are few Salesforce products which has been launched by Salesforce back in June 2020. We are keeping as top notch on these particular products while keeping it hands on on these particular products so that we can make life easy for developer lifecycle as well as for UI experience. First one is code builder. Over the past few years, there, there have been huge improvement to developer productivity on the Salesforce platform. Code builder, it is a web-based development environment fully optim optimized for Salesforce development. And this is powered by Microsoft Visual Studio. We can use the code spaces and we can do the code stuff by the developer onto the browser without any installation onto the desktop. While using Code Builder, we are not saving any data or any code locally. Second, Salesforce Functions. Salesforce Functions is a seamless part of a Salesforce platform and no extra authentication or networking setup is required. Node.js and Java developers 
can also use those function and work them directly from apex and run logic with all context and query and write back updates we can also capture the change data events platform events flow builder and apex as well these are the serverless container write type so that whenever we are fetching the data from apex directly calling these salesforce functions known as evergreen DevOps Center. The DevOps Center will provide an improved UI based experience for change and release management that will not only deliver a modern and robust experience for declarative developers and admins, but also allow for collaboration between declarative and programmatic developers through a DevOps process. We need not to use GitHub or source tree or bit bucket in order to handle the version control track the changes and we can make the deployment with a center source of truth using work items salesforce anywhere app. salesforce anywhere app is a new app to enable more effective collaboration embedded within salesforce this app brings chat alerts comments and video directly into the CR rather than spread out and lost across text messages and email threads Salesforce and anywhere app helps every Salesforce user collaborate with teams stay productive in their workflows keep up to date on their customers with chat alerts comments and video embedded directly we are VSQ Infotech working on these particular products which has been launched by Salesforce in TDX 2020 so that we can handle our clients and we can implement those particular products for our clients and make their user experience better. Thank you very much. Over to you Kunal. Thanks Vineet for the wonderful insight into the platform cache. Uh, we have received a couple of questions. Uh, let me go through them. First question, what is the main difference between org and session cache? Vineet, you, you would want to take this? Okay. Org cache, uh, it can be used by org wide users. All right, so session cache will be used by only one login user. Org cache is accessible across session request and org users and profiles. But session cache stores data for one particular individual user and is tied to that particular user sessions. We need not to worry the user sessions. Session cache will handle it automatically in backend. Uh, okay, thanks. Another one, can ISP partner add cache partition as part of their package? Mm, yes, uh, they can implement cache as part of their package and use it with their namespace. Also, they have the liberty to control the usage of those particular cache by the subscriber. Mm, yes. Uh, through FX, they can also allow subscriber to use those platform cache partitions if the platform cache has been exhausted. Right. Okay. Um, another one. With CRM as large as Salesforce, how does QInfotech evolve themselves using Salesforce as CRM for the clients in terms of both new features and active project deliveries. Uh, I'll, I'll take this. So, you know, as it is true for any other enterprise software, in Salesforce also, uh, we religiously adhere to the best practices and evolve ourselves with the new features and products that are introduced by Salesforce. As they, you know, they would only bring efficiencies in both product and development cycle. So our main focus 
is to develop as per our client requirements in efficient and optimized way but we also religiously ensure that we upskill our engineers so that they can also work on the innovations while we bring uh, you know our our expertise in the mix so earlier you know just i had mentioned that salesforce uh, it, it used to have classic experience where the only scope of development was visual force page and apex class but with lightning components now they have opened gates for html javascript css so we continue to embrace the new changes and technologies all right um we have one another one are there any spe special considerations to implement platform cache for lightning experience vinit yeah mm, no it's just a memory store where you can store the data by calling apex through uh, or our web components i'll say you should also create various partition based on the use cases and call the call those partitions through apex meta and use them further while using apex uh, pl uh, platform cache it's very necessary that you will create various partition so that you can use those partition with different use cases all, all right uh, we have one more so how does platform cache help in integration with third party applications mm. okay so integration between third party application and salesforce it will help to uh, sync data in real time and if we if we want to reduce some response time it will provide great user experience and uh, platform cache will store the data which we get or send back to third party application and we can reduce those response time in order to make uh, user experience better yeah okay uh, we need we have one more we just came in are there any limits to the amount of cash that can be stored in platform cash uh, limits you cannot store into the platform cash right means if you have any limit you cannot store those limit into the platform cash it's a memory store you can store the data i think it in was probably to... asking about the limits to amount of cash i'll say there are few limits which you need to consider let's say in i'll say that in developer audition we have 10 mb we can request the trial capacity of 10 mb and in the unlimited and performance edition we used to get uh, 30 mb by default right but we can purchase up to 3 gb and that is the hard limit uh, in order to store the data in platform cache in uh, performance and unlimited edition enterprise and unlimited edition i'm sorry uh, those edition you can store the data up to 3 gb and that is the hard limit to store the data yeah all right great uh, that is it uh, that's all the questions we have in case there are any more questions uh, you can write us at info@qinfotech.com at there will be a follow up survey sent to your registered email with a link to webinar's recording this concludes the webinar i thank you all for attending